So guys, this is the first of our test week sessions. Um, we have two movements that we're doing today. One is um, a broad jump for max distance. So in a broad jump, we're looking for max horizontal distance. And then in uh, the second movement we're doing is a plank to fatigue or a max effort plank. So with your um, broad jump, what we're typically looking for is obviously like max distance traveled. So what I'd suggest you do is uh, make use of the measure app on your phone if you're not entirely sure about how to calculate those distances or get yourself a tape measure out and just lay it along the floor next to you. You obviously counting where your foot first strikes the ground. So if you stumble forwards, it's obviously not where you end up, it's where you hit the ground first. So a couple of little points is with your um, broad jump. First of all, we want to keep the hip bend and the knee bend to uh, a min minimum. So if you're going to deep uh, hip bend, for example, you're sort of dissipating lots of energy as waste. The other thing is we want to make use of the arm swing as well. So your arm swing, think about it being like a, a comedy ski action. You're going to swing the arms back and then as you jump and start to extend, the arms are going to come forward and help you get some power in that jump. Now the other thing that we're looking for is a good quality landing. If you're in max effort, it's likely that you're going to stumble your landing, we'd expect that. Um, you want to avoid landing on your toes um, or in a forefoot position. Ideally, you want to be breaking that movement. You should be stabilising the end, um, but for some max efforts, it's unlikely that you're going to stabilise the end. So what I mean by stabilise is when you land the jump, ideally we are looking for you to land and stick it as opposed to falling forward. As such, it might be useful to do this on grass or on a softer, um, uh, softer surface, so completely up to you. Our second movement then is a plank to fatigue and it's an extended plank. So we're going for a straight arm position. Now with your straight arm position, the best position you can be in from a fatigue perspective is making sure the wrists, elbows and shoulders are in line. What we sometimes get with a straight arm plank is people have their arms just a little bit higher than their shoulder level. And that means that this shoulder has to work a little bit harder to maintain that. The other thing you want to be thinking about in a straight arm plank position is what you're doing with your pelvis. So in a straight arm plank, we shouldn't have an arch of the back. We should have a nice hollow position and equally we shouldn't have uh, the bum popping up into the air. So what I would like you to do in this is I'd like you to film yourself performing that plank position. Set a timer on your phone. Um, it's ideal if you have something like Coach's Eye or if you have some similar um, observational apps that can time your attempt as well. Because what you're going to need to do is look out for the point you lose position. So our position, as I said, we should have hollow position, arms straight out in front of us, locked out and we're avoiding back arch, we're avoiding the hips popping up. As soon as you move out of optimal position, that means you have failed the test. So with that, if you can't get into that position to start off, you're going to record it as a zero. And that essentially means if you cannot get into that hollow plank position, arms stretched out, no popping up of the bum, and you can't maintain that good plank position, we're going to uh, put it as a, a zero because ultimately you're not getting into the right position to perform the test. But that isn't a problem because the whole purpose of the next few weeks is we're going to be working some core strength. So if it's a zero at the minute, that's not a problem. If it's under 10 seconds at the minute, that's not a problem. The purpose of this test week is to give us an indication of where you are now. So when we come to eight weeks time, you can retest um, and we can see where you are at. Get your scores logged on Sugarwad. If there's anything that you found particularly hard, log it. Uh, if there's anything that you found, like you realize now is an area that you need to work on, get it logged and we will uh, make sure that we catch up on these and we're uh, programming around where you guys feel like you need to work for the next few weeks. Good luck, get your uh, scores on Sugarwad and I look forward to seeing how everyone's done.